Hello and welcome back everyone. We weep online and today I'm gonna continue the story What if I not added solo leveling part 5. If you enjoy this video, please give it a big thumbs up and to watch more videos like this, subscribe to my channel and turn that bell notification on so you never miss an upload. Now wasting no more time, let's begin. Kurinai said, and that concludes our report Hokage Sama, capping off her account of their encounter in Kaori village. Hiruzen was only able to hold back a long, agonizing sigh because of his many years of experience in this role. Hiruzen thought, this is getting worse in Kirigakure, this will definitely get Donzo's attention. Kurinai interrupted, Hokage-sama, is something the matter? And startled Hiruzen out of his reverie. He took a drag from his pipe and said, forgive an old man and his musings. It's not every day that you encounter a missing nin, let alone three on your first mission outside of the village. I hope this does not turn into a recurring problem, he joked. Kuranai shook her head and said, I think we can safely say this mission was an anomaly rather than the norm Hokage-sama. Hiruzen laughed as he noticed Hinata blush a little. I should think Naruto-kun will be most disappointed that your first C rank was more eventful than his. It may turn out that you will have to console him, he said. Hinata asked, You um Hokage-sama, where is Naruto-kun? Team 7 left the village yesterday on their own sea rank mission to Nami no Kuni, Land of Waves. He was quite disappointed that he was unable to see you before heading off. He claimed to have a surprise to show you. He was adamant that you would be the first to see. He wouldn't even show me before he left, Hiruzen laughed. Oh, I'm sorry. Hokage-sama, on behalf of Naruto-kun, Hanada said, bending slightly. There's no need for apologies, that boy is as stubborn and fiery as his. Hiruzen abruptly stopped, laughing heartily and wiping a tear from his eye. Hanada questioned, Hokage-sama, as she noticed their leader suddenly grow serious. His laughter trailed off, it's nothing, I suppose I would say he was as stubborn and fiery as a habanero, he remarked, fiery and spirited. Kiba said, you mean loud and obnoxious right, to which Kuranai shot him a warning glance. Well, there you have it, Hiruzen remarked amiably. Now I would like to congratulate Team Aid on a successful mission that was completed beyond normal parameters. This will go down as a B-rank mission on you file. Unfortunately we only received payment of C-rank from the client so your pay will remain unchanged. However you will receive an extra payment for delivering the three enemy combatants alive. Please see requisitions down the hall for the bounty. Dismissed. Team Aid chanted, Yes, Hokage-sama, as they left the office. You hear that guys? B rank, Kiba exclaimed, bouncing up and down. I can't wait to rub that in Naruto and Sasuke's faces. Kuranai broke out in, Kiba, his festivity, there is a little thing we like to call humility. Ah come on sensei, let me have this, Kiba begged, attempting to employ the fabled puppy dog eyes no jutsu but failing miserably. Besides we will be able to lord this over them for years, none of us are going to see in a rank mission till we are chunin at least. Kuranai shot him an angry glance and stopped outside the requisition's office. After a few minutes, Team 8 was rewarded with 1700 Ryo for completing the mission and an extra 4500 Ryo from the bounties they gathered. As they prepared to depart, Hanada suddenly recalled the bounty slip she had received. She said, um, excuse me, to get Chunin's attention while reaching into her jacket to retrieve something, but in reality, she was accessing her inventory. I found this bounty slip when we captured the missing nin, do I need to hand this in here? The chunin picked up the slip with care and remarked, well, I have not seen one of these in a long time, we used to use bounty slips like this around 10 years ago, now though we don't use them. It used to be that you would insert them into an automated machine that would dispense a voucher to cash in at the local bank. We actually put the machine in the academy so that you rookies could see how things used to be. Why don't you go and take a look? A new quest was created Bounty Machine. Goal. Locate the Academy's Bounty Machine. Benefit. 100 experience points. Y, N Team 8 prepared to split after accepting the mission and thanking him for the information, but Hanada stopped them. I know we have the next few days off but see could we meet tomorrow, I have some things that I want to tell everyone, Hanada replied with seriousness. Kuranai gave Hanada a curious glance, but she acknowledged it with a nod. All right, team, go home for the time being and get some rest. We'll meet at our training grounds at the regular time tomorrow. 
Playing with the bounty slip in her hand, Hanada found herself walking slowly to deliver Iroh's tea order, a welcome diversion from her stomach nodding up over not wanting to reveal her secret to the rest of her team. Though the three of them had not spent much time together at the academy, they had already grown to feel like a second family, and slowly but surely she started to calm down when she considered how welcoming her team had been thus far. Iroh's shop appeared as she rounded the corner, and she hurriedly ducked into an alley to get the tea out of her inventory before heading to the door. The aroma of lemongrass danced through the air, calming her as soon as she opened the shop's door. Iroh came out from the back and said, Ah, Hanada-chan, welcome back. Come sit. I'll get you a nice cup of tea to soothe the body and relax the mind. Hanada laughed and said, I wonder if you will ever get tired of tea, Iroh-san, when she saw Iroh's embarrassed expression. To be tired of tea is akin to being tired of breathing, he shook his head in response. Speaking of tea, Hanada gave him the big package and said, here is your order, and here is your money. However, does this appear to be the entire sum I gave you? Iroh asked. I may have gotten a better deal than I initially thought, Hanada stated. Iroh raised a brow and said, I think there's a story in there somewhere. After telling her story over several steaming cups of tea and a few drops of heaven laced with cinnamon, Hanada eventually left the shop a few hours later. Personal Question Summary Quest Get Iroh's Tea Order and Deliver It Bonus Goal Bargain and Save 10% Bonus Goal Acquire a 25% Reduction Main Reward 250 RYO, 200 Express, and 200 Iroh Reputation Bonus Reward 50 Iroh Reputation Points and 100 EXP 10% Lifetime Discount on All Purchases as a Bonus you have significantly surpassed expectations and gained 200 reputation with Iroh by receiving a 100% discount. Arriving at the academy with a bounce in her step, Hanada found that all the students and teachers had gone home, allowing her to waltz right into the atrium where an antiquated vending machine stood. Though she could imagine many academy students trying to get snacks from the machine only to be let down, it did appear more like the kind of machine you would get a drink or some snacks from than a bounty post. But then again, perhaps that had been the point. As Hanada positioned her bounty slip near the machine's mouth, she reasoned that it was either now or never. Query SUCCESSED Bounty Machine Goal. Locate the Academy's Bounty Machine. Benefit. 100 experience points you are now at a higher level. Hanada Hayuga the player's class title. Baikugan and Jukan techniques plus 10% experience gain for Hayuga clan air. Instructor. Kuranai. Add 50% to Genjutsu learning rates, plus 1 point for wisdom and intelligence for every level up. Express. 15 to advance to level 92, 5830 and 44 hundredths HP. CP. 530 hundredths power. 23, 10. Skillfulness. 49, 4.41, 10. Quickness. 30, 3, 10. Vitality, 10, 24. Cognition, 27, 10, 33, 3.87, 10, Wisdom. Charm points, 9 present situation, timid, minus 20% experience gained through Jukan techniques and minus 20% reputation gains below friendly. Flexible joints, plus 2 level specific dexterity, plus 50% experience with jutsu and skills point. 48. Benefit. 2 Ryo. 17,040 she had only needed to complete that quest in order to level up, and, similar to level 5 and 10, reaching level 15 had given her an additional bonus point. Hanada was notified of her ability as soon as the machine accepted the bounty slip. Bounty machine enemies that have been entered into the bingo book will drop bounty slips. You can use these slips to turn them into any bounty machine you come across to earn bounty points. Once you have enough bounty points, you will be awarded a prize. You can use the bounty screen, which has been added to your menu options, to track your progress as more rewards become visible as you accrue more bounty points. The following point totals apply to bounty awards, the higher the ranking, the more points are awarded. C Classification 1B Ranking 2A Grade 3 S Class 
5. It is in your best interest to gather as many of the extremely rare items that bounty rewards can offer, some of which have been lost to the passage of time and some of which come from different planes of existence. As she watched the machine process her slip, Hanada thought, well, that was interesting. Eventually, the screen verified her entry of 1C rank bounty, and she concluded that all of the current rewards were reasonable. 1 point. 1 bonus point 3 points equals 10,000 experience points. 5 points. The regeneration ring 10 points. Water release. Water shark bullet jutsu, Sweden. Suikodan no jutsu. Hanada observed that the perk point had turned grayed out after the first bounty was claimed, and she verified that she actually had three perk points remaining by looking at her status screen. It seemed ironic considering the lengths she had to go to in order to unlock her own Byakugan, and she had been considering what to do with her points lately. Advent of the Byakugan no Heim was a nice sound, even though it sounded a bit grandiose. In fact, it was probably time for her to reveal that she had unlocked her Byakugan, as only her team and Naruto knew at the moment. The enhanced range bonus was nice, but if the other part of the perk worked as she thought it would, this would be invaluable, so she spent two of her precious perk points on the best option available. The perk did not specify that her Byakugan had to be active in order for her ability to see through all Genjutsu C rank and below to be effective. Theoretically, she would still have immunity even if her bloodline was not active, but she would still need to test this. She discovered that a new perk was now available on her perk screen after purchasing the previous one. Rise of the Byakugan no Heim. Gain an extra 10 CP and HP per level. Requirement level 18. Minus 3 points. Raise the range bonus per level in the Byakugan skill from 100 to 200, and automatically see through Genjutsu B rank and below. That perk looked interesting, and Hinata had to wonder if any of her other available perks would do something similar. This was the first time purchasing a perk unlocked a more powerful version. It was also the first perk that had a purchase requirement, so she would have to consider what to buy with her final point. Given how slowly perk points could be earned, she was almost tempted to buy one of the single point items. Either way, it was time to return home, and her dad would definitely want to know how her first C rank mission turned out. Omake the bowl on the countertop the one with the little green toads hopping up and down around the bull's sides, was her two chan's favorite, and two little arms stretched with all their might to reach it. The small figure huffed and tried to leap up to grab the bull off the counter, but she fell to the ground, overextending herself and smiling gleefully as she clasped it in her hand. Himawari. The voice of a bullet with blonde hair who ran forward to cushion her fall came. Uzumaki Himawari's voice called out, Oni-chan grinning from her perch above her elder brother. At four years old, Himawari, the daughter of Naruto and Hinata Uzumaki, was a striking resemblance to her mother, but with her father's whisker marks, chubby cheeks, and ocean blue eyes. Hima. Leave me alone, as he fought to break free, her brother yelled from beneath her. Sorry Boruto ni. However, Boruto, who was six years old, had blonde hair, a cheeky smile, and was the splitting image of his father. He would frequently become irritated when people said he looked like a younger Naruto. What were you doing outside, Himawari? Boruto inquired of his sister. After getting up from her brother's back, Himawari said, Well, it's Tu Chan's birthday today. I didn't know what to get him so I thought what does Tu Chan love most in the world after me and Ka Chan? Hi, her brother yelled. Ramen, Himawari excitedly giggled. Em, Ichiraku's was all Boruto could say, his mouth opening wide with saliva. I thought we should make breakfast ramen for Tu Chan, she said, grinning proudly. You know that's not bad, Boruto said, scrunching up his face in thought. It was a pretty good idea. I can't believe that Tu Chan and Ka Chan spar that frequently every week. They are always so exhausted and perspiring in the morning. Yes, everyone says that Tu Chan is the strongest person in the village, but Ka Chan must be stronger because she always seems to come out on top in their battles. When Tu Chan loses, he always moans. Indeed, Ka Chan is the most powerful. Boruto nodded his head profoundly, understanding, Tu Chan is stronger than Kakashi Jiji, and Ka Chan is stronger than Tu Chan. So that implies that they will go hungry, right? Himawari continued. Yes, let's get going. Boruto said with a triumphant smile that soon became apparent. By the way, how do you make ramen? Stretching out, 
Uzumaki Hanada grinned contentedly at her husband, who was lying fully exhausted beside her. She felt that all those vital points had been well spent. He turned to face his wife and leaned over to kiss her on the lips, praising Hanada for her extraordinary endurance while tuning out Kurama's insults about Uzumaki women. In the meantime, Hanada blushed a bright red in response to her husband's compliments. I can't wait to tell Kakashi Sensei how great you are. You even performed the maneuver described on page 174 of Icha Icha Tactics. Naruto remarked, Sensei has been trying to get someone to do that for years, to which his wife shot him a cold stare. She firmly said, Naruto-kun, what happens in the bedroom stays in the bedroom. Yes, my dear, Naruto answered. The couple heard a clanging sound coming from the kitchen, just as they were about to rekindle their romance for a few more minutes. As soon as Hanada activated her Byakugan, Naruto woke up. Naruto called out, Hanada, but as soon as he saw his wife turn off her Byakugan, he calmed down. Relax it's just Boruto and Himawari, said Hanada. It looks like they are trying to make you breakfast. A small, eep, came from Hanada as Naruto, wearing a corny smile, swept her up into his arms. A beautiful wife, fantastic kids, man this day couldn't get any better. Following their change of clothes, Naruto and Hinata went to the kitchen, where their two kids cried out, Happy Birthday. Himawari grinned broadly and said, Tu Chan, Tu Chan, look what Boruto ni and I made for you. Ramen, Ramen, Boruto exclaimed with excitement. How amazing it appears. Distinctive, Naruto remarked, swallowing. Well we didn't have all the ingredients. Boruto went on. But I'm sure it tastes good, we added all your favorites. Himawari laughed, yeah, we used chicken stock, beans, and no tomatoes only Teme likes those, as Naruto sheepishly attempted to sidestep Hinata's penetrating stare. Indeed, Boruto said, we also added some onion and some barbecue sauce. It didn't sound all that horrible up until now, but why was it orange? But, Boruto ni is really smart, Himawari said. We were out of noodles so we added strawberry licorice. Naruto's face paled slightly as both Boruto and Tu-san began to list all the ingredients they used. Yay and Tu-san likes orange, so we added some orange juice, Boruto said proudly. Tu-chan, eat up, with joy, they both cried out. Unaware of what to anticipate, Hanada used her observed skill to see what the children had come up with. She blinked once, then once more. This was unexpected. Enko would have been pleased to employ this during one of her interrogations. Just as Naruto was about to take a spoonful of the sizzling mixture, Hinata's arm snapped out to grab hold of his wrist. Wait, sizzling, when did it start to do that? With a trembling voice, Hinata uttered, Naruto-kun, her eyes expressing a message that only a true soul mate could comprehend. Naruto's eyes widened slightly and he gave a gentle shake of his head. I must consume the breakfast that my two amazing children have prepared for me, he exclaimed, much to the joy of Himawari and Boruto. Coughing back a cry, Hanada could only nod her head in understanding. In the back of his mind, Naruto felt Kurama rage and fear as he cautiously took the first spoon into his mouth. Suck it up! He smiled strangely at his wide-eyed children, knowing he would not be able to withstand a protracted battle. This opponent was too strong for his Jinchuriki-enhanced stamina, and he needed to finish this quickly. His children's happy looks were the only thing that encouraged him to keep going as he picked up the bowl and began to chug, feeling each gulp as it slid towards his stomach. When he was finished, he set down the bowl and, with a trembling hand, tousled the hair of Himawari and Boruto. Gochisusama Dashida, it was really tasty. Congrats! The kids were happy to see their father enjoying the food, and they cheered and gave each other high fives. Reluctant to cry, Hanada said, Kids, why don't you go play in your room while I clean up? All right, they exclaimed as they joyfully fled the room. En Naruto-kun? Hanada questioned hesitantly. Rivers of sweat had begun to run down Naruto's brow, his eyes bloodshot and red, and he was sitting with his arms crossed in front of him, a strained expression on his face. It was very tasty, he moaned. With caution, he attempted to stand up, but as he fell to the ground, all of his leg strength had failed him. Hanada claimed to have seen his mouth foam and his eyes literally start to spin. His body began to spasm as he said, it was delicious. Kun, 
Naruto. As Team 8 left his office, Hiruzen arched his shoulders in relief. At his age, putting on an official air took a toll on his back. Even though his aging bones needed a rest, he valued the chance to engage with the younger generation despite the need to maintain appearances. It was another gorgeous day in Konoha, as he could see by peering out of the window into his office. The village felt cozy and secure because of the soft golden sunlight that filled every building. If he closed his eyes, he could almost imagine himself somewhere else, perhaps enjoying his retirement. He could smell the scent of the trees as they waved in the warm breeze. But alas, he thought, wiping his brows in frustration, that was not to be. Glancing back up at the Hokage Monument, which honored the village's leaders, he opened his eyes again. Hashirama Sensei, you were worshipped as the god of Shinobi. Hiruzen believed that the village still exists today because of your vision. Thank you, Toborama Sensei, for all of your hard work in streamlining the village system's operations and providing the stability we enjoy today. Minato-san. With a deep and heavy sigh, as if the entire world rested on his shoulders, Hiruzen let out a cry. All of you passed away before your time, leaving only this elderly man who is much past his prime. I sincerely hope that the new leaves of this village will not be forced to pay the price for the mistakes made by an elderly man like me. War is a terrible thing. Hauling himself into his desk, Hiruzen retrieved a small pot of tobacco and carefully filled his pipe. He touched the tobacco with his index finger, and a gentle, controlled release of chakra caused the substance to catch fire. He chuckled to himself, remembering Tsunade's reaction when he attempted to defend the exercise as a valid chakra control exercise. Tobacco igniting exercise successful, he said. A knock at the door cut him off before he could get too engrossed in the memories. Hiruzen let out a little sigh, straightened up a little, and reached to put out his pipe when he had a change of heart. He nodded his head firmly, thinking, I'm the Hokage dammit, and if I want to smoke in my own village, that's what I'll do. He gestured for the person to enter the room and said, come in. He was surprised to see someone he had not expected to see today when the door slowly opened. Hokage-sama, Shimura Donzo's cool, collected voice said. For a brief moment, Hiruzen fixed his gaze on him, attempting to decipher the possible reason behind their meeting. He soon motioned for his old teammate to come inside. Hello, Danzo, Hiruzen acknowledged with a nod of his head. To what do I owe the pleasure of this visit? With great care, Danzo entered the office and carefully took the seat in front of Hiruzen, distributing his weight evenly with his cane. Hiruzen really had to force himself not to roll his eyes at Danzo's, frail old man, antics. Even though his wounds were quite serious, he would have to be extremely weak to accept the weak routine. Once he was comfortably seated, Danzo spoke in a calm, quiet tone. I hear rumors that a new genin team have managed to apprehend three bloodline users from Kirigakir. Hiruzen was fully aware that this was a statement rather than a question based on the manner in which it was asked. And how pray tell did you manage to come upon this information, when I only learned of it mere moments ago? He said, narrowing his eyes a little. Hiruzen expressed his concerns, but Danzo waved them away with a casual gesture, saying, You know how shinobi are now a day hokage-sama, most of them gossip like an old fishwife. Not like in our day when a secret was taken to the grave. Danzo, Hiruzen growled, sending a hint of his murderous intent into the space. Danzo responded in kind, and the one visible eye that had been partially closed up until now opened fully. Hokage-sama, he said, unleashing his deadly intent on the chamber. The Anbu that were present, hidden in the rafters, all quickly reached for their weapons and were about to step in when, out of nowhere, both men started to laugh lightly as their intentions to kill vanished. The two elderly men were the only Anbu remaining in the room when he raised his hand and gestured for them to leave. They were more twitchy than I anticipated, Hiruzen, Danzo remarked, tenderly caressing his chin scar. For a moment I thought they may actually attack. And who would Danzo have been at fault for that? Hiruzen questioned. Danzo scoffed, raising the one visible eyebrow. Oh my apologies, I did not realize I was the one to release my killing intent first. Hiruzen replied slowly, a smile appearing on his face as he took a long draw from his pipe. Hiruzen smirked and replied, yeah, but you released your killing intent at your cage. That could be considered an act of treason you know you old warhawk. As if you would try me for treason, 
You senile old monkey, he uttered, staring the other man down. There was a brief tense moment before each man's lips curled into a tiny, barely perceptible smile. As fun as conversing with my old teammate is, I somehow doubt that you are here for a social call. Danzo gave a nod, and the two veterans seemed more serious than before. I wish to request permission to make use of our newest assets, Danzo replied. If Hiruzen appeared taken aback, he did not express it. They have already been promised to Ibiki, if you want to have any involvement you will need to seek permission from him, Hiruzen countered. Very well, Danzo acknowledged with a nod of comprehension. Hiruzen asked, you still haven't told me how you found out about this. Danzo shot back, you know full well that I have various sources. Sources that you won't share with your cage, Hiruzen retaliated. The light cannot be tainted by the shadows, you know this Hiruzen, Danzo replied. How many times will we continue to have this same conversation? As many times as is necessary, you fail to understand that we are no longer at war, Hiruzen stated. Danzo said, pounding his cane on the ground with a dull thud, and you fail to understand that we will always be at war. Danzo. Danzo cut in, no Hiruzen, let me speak, despite what the rest of the world thinks, Konoha is currently the weakest it has ever been. Since the Kyubi attack our forces have been devastated, apart from Suna we are clearly the weakest of the five villages, no matter our boasts of strength. Konoha remains strong, the will of fire burns brightly in its people, Hiruzen stated. The will of fire will not protect us when Kumo or Iwa are at our gates. Hiruzen sighed with annoyance. These were regular arguments between the two teammates. Hiruzen only chose to ignore some of Danzo's behavior because of certain facts raised in the debate. Danzo said, his hand gripping his cane more tightly, our tentative alliance with Suna and the civil unrest in Kiri is the only factor that stays Iwa and Kumo's hand, that and their belief in our supposed military superiority. We still have a lot of talented ninja working for us, Hiruzen retorted. Yes, but no S-rank threats. We have two old men that are well past their prime, a lecher, and a drunk that are both off God knows where and made a guy, that is it, Danzo replied. Hiruzen scowled at the comment, but he knew it was a fair appraisal. We do have many shinobi who show the potential to attain that level of strength, Hitaki Kakashi, Yuhi Kuranai and my son to name a few, Hiruzen stated. Hiruzen's blissful naivete was precisely why Danzo needed him, he scoffed. A broken man who can't even look past his own pain, so desperate to recreate his old team that he is stunting his students' growth. A woman who has great potential, however she stubbornly refuses to use her own keke jenke. Finally a lays about who became demotivated because he couldn't live up to his father's standards, are these the candidates that you speak of? Hiruzen inquired, and what would you have me do? Stop being so passive, your fear of igniting another war is only hindering the village, Danzo said. And your fervor for war is unsettling old friend, the young ones of this village should not have to pay for our mistakes. And what will you do when war turns up at our doorstep, asked Danzo. Hiruzen said, then. Then I will remind the world why I too am called the god of shinobi, his face spotted with shadows. This was what he was hoping to see, this was it. Even though he hated the term, it was accurate to say that fire had a strong hold on his cage's eyes. Because Hiruzen was too submissive, if he threatened his house, a fierce god would awaken, the old man's shackles would melt, and a warrior would rise in his place. Very well, then the matter is closed. For now, Danzo replied. Though we do have some promising new talent emerging, he went on. Hiruzen wondered, and who has caught your attention? Uchiha Saskyu, while not as proficient as his brother he still shows potential. Hayuga Neji is being hailed as a genius but his growth is being stunted by clan bureaucracy. You know as well as I do that change needs to come from within the Hayuga clan, that is one of the few spheres of influence where my power does not extend, Hiruzen said. Danzo went on, knowing all too well that Hiruzen was correct. Uzumaki Naruto at first I wrote the boy off after you refused to let me train him. However despite being handicapped throughout his education he has managed to learn a B-ranked Kinjutsu in a matter of hours. Not only that, but the boy somehow has managed to learn a sealess variation of the Shunshin no Jutsu. Danzo stated this much to Hiruzen's delight. Hiruzen thought, that must be the secret he has been keeping, 
considering the boy's ability to accomplish that feat despite possessing a monstrous chakra pool. This shows an incredible aptitude for kinesthetic learning, which combined with the Shadow Clone's true ability, could propel him far. Something I notice Hitaki is not taking advantage of, Danzo said with anger. Hiruzen is capable of reading between the lines, so if you won't let me train him, find a qualified replacement. But the biggest surprise has been Hayuga Hanada, she is a diamond in the rough and I intend to monitor her more closely from now on, Danzo said. Danzo! Hiruzen exclaimed, sounding alarm. No Hiruzen, you have made it clear that the Uzumaki is off limits, but a new crop of S-ranked shinobi must be trained. For now I will keep my distance, but should she come to me? When Hinata returned to the clan compound to find her father, she discovered that he was preoccupied with a meeting involving the clan elders. She made an effort to see the best in everyone, but the elders were truly to blame for the current distortion of the clan, in her honest opinion. She had no idea how to handle the clan elders, despite her desire to become clan head in order to mend the rift within her clan. She had learned the ways of most Konoha clans long ago from Sayako. Though it would be understandable to believe that the clan head had unquestionable power within the clan, as the Hokage did in Konoha, you would also be gravely mistaken. The Hokage's word was law, with the exception of very few situations involving clan secrets. When Konoha was first established, the Shodai Hokage put this into place to allay clan's worries and suspicions about joining the village. As a result, the Hokage's administrative power had a dark spot. The clan head and the clan council filled this power vacuum. Any issue involving clan secrets, which the caged bird seal classified, would be decided by this body. The council, which consists of six elders, and the clan head would cast votes to determine what actions to take. The chief of the clan had four votes, and the elders each had one vote. As a result, a clan head could not decide anything on their own that the clan did not agree with. The elders of the Hyuga clan were so set in their ways that change was impossible, despite the fact that this system of checks and balances was a good idea in theory and had worked well for many other clans. Her father may have been strict, but he was actually quite liberal when he took over as head of the household. But as the years passed, he started to become less hostile to the elders' wishes. She was waiting in his office to inform him that her mission had been successful when she had these kinds of thoughts. Seated opposite his desk, she peered about the Spartan room. Hanada believed that her mother's support must have been the driving force behind his opposition. Upon further reflection, she realized that his choice to wed outside of the clan must have been controversial at the time. She reached into her inventory to pull out one of the songs she had discovered earlier, and her memories quickly turned to thoughts of her mother. She had never had the time before, but now that she was here, for whatever reason, it felt right to give it a shot. She wasn't sure if singing was something she would be good at, but having another connection to her mother would be wonderful. Gathering the bravery to begin Hinata inhaled deeply. As soon as you leave you miss what I said. Oh baby, please don't go. I feel so clean and simple right now, thanks to you. It's difficult to let go, I'm getting too much from you. You're all I need these days, with a smile, you said to me. Please understand that I adore you. Does that imply, though, that I must meet your father? As we get older, you'll comprehend the meaning behind my no. Life isn't quite that easy, in my opinion. She was lost in the song, not even noticing the door opening behind her. Had she done so, she would have witnessed her father attempt to regain his composure by knuckling his hand against the doorknob. Hanada turned and cleared his throat, drawing attention once more. Singing has become a new talent. Singing a bardic inspiration skill that allies can use to their advantage. You have learned the song, Simple and Clean, which is a lament. The more skillfully one sings it, the more at ease one's turbulent emotions will be. The level of singing has gone up by one. The level of singing has gone up by one. Charm grew by one. The level of singing has gone up by one. Tu Sama, the shocked Hinata uttered. Hinata saw her father approach his desk and take a seat all the while keeping a close eye on her. It was amazing how all her fears seemed to surface just by being in her father's presence, even with all the progress she had made. My daughter, quietly stated Hiyashi, I see you have returned unharmed, I am pleased. Why yes, I have returned from my first mission outside the village. My C-ranked assignment was upgraded to B-ranked due to the increased difficulty of the mission parameters, said Hinata. 
Hinata felt as though Hiyashi was removing layers of her own skin as he seemed to just watch her for a brief moment. In response, she had to fight the urge to use her by Akugan. Why didn't she just turn it on, after all, since she knew her father would be proud that she had done it at last? But something was preventing her from doing so, maybe it was the idea of hiding something from her all-seeing clan. Her father said, I see, and then please give me the full details of what you encountered. Hanada spent the next few hours narrating the specifics of her mission, and her father listened to her for the most part. He occasionally questioned her further, but mostly he let her speak without interruption. She eventually completed her report and exhaled, realizing that she had been holding her breath while she awaited his reply. I see, very well. This will bring an increase in our clan's reputation, you should go and rest now. That was it, nothing well done. No, I'm pleased with you. Hanada was shocked inside. What more would she need to do to receive recognition? Just as she was about to lose it on her father for the first time, she felt the chakra behind her eyes start to intensify. She also noticed a message appear. Hayuga Hiyashi's reputation rose by 300 how come? Was he pleased with her? It was so confusing, so why didn't he say anything? With a rare surge of self-assurance, Hanada took action. Tu Sama, are you ashamed of me? Hanada would not have noticed the barely noticeable enlargement of his eyes if she had not been observing him closely. You are my daughter, what makes you ask such a thing? Hanada went on, that's not an answer, are you ashamed of me? While shaking her head. As clan head I am pleased with your performance on this mission, however do not forget yourself by asking such questions. Hanada continued, lifting her head to the point where she was looking him in the eyes. I don't care what the clan head thinks. I asked Tusama are you ashamed of me? She would have believed that she saw her father flinch under her intense gaze if she hadn't known any different. You've matured, Hiyashi said plainly. Tusama? inquired Hinata. Hiyashi said, until recently you would not have spoken to me so brazenly, making Hinata blush a little. He whispered, so much like his mother, and said, I don't know if it was experiencing a life or death situation or your new interaction with the Uzumaki boy. Saying, you mean Uzumaki Kashina? Hanada caused her father's head to spin around so quickly that it appeared to be going to take off. He insisted, where did you hear that name? I found a photo downstairs in storage of you on a team with her, I take it that is why the clan pays for Naruto-kun's housing? She speculated. Following his daughter's statement, Hiyashi went through a number of hand seals, and his office walls began to display privacy seals. It appears that you have been prying, he said. Hiyashi asked his confused daughter, Hanada, what would you say is the village's perception of Naruto? Her father nodded understandingly as she said, Naruto-kun seems to be hated for something. At first I thought it may have been his pranks but it's too vitriolic to be because of something that. Naruto-kun is a kind person, I don't know why he is treated that way. And on the clan council what proportion of the vote can I reliably control? Hanada replied, 40%, and then her eyes grew wide with realization. With a pointed glance, he said, I trust you not to talk about what you found outside of these walls. But why is he treated that way? That is a S-ranked secret, the only people able to disclose that are the Hokage and Naruto himself, Hiyashi replied. However, what about his parents? Why hasn't anyone told him who they were, at least? She questioned knowing full well that Naruto used to longingly watch the kids being picked up from the academy. That is also classified as an S-ranked secret, Hiyashi validated. Hanada asked, but you just confirmed who his mother was. You were already aware of the situation, and it would be more accurate to say his father's identity is a S-ranked secret. Why would his father's identity be a S-ranked secret? She sat for a moment in contemplation, not realizing that her father was observing her closely while she worked it out. She could only conclude that either his father was so well known that the information was risky or that he had committed something so heinous that it needed to be suppressed. She was inclined to believe the latter, given Naruto's closeness to the Hokage. That might also be the case, though, because she required more details regarding the original secret. Your ability to reason has given you one more wisdom point. Tu Sama, you wouldn't happen to have any further information about your old genin team and its members would you? replied Hanada. Oh and why would you want that? Curiosity, since becoming a genin I feel it would be wise to learn from my father's experience. 
Besides as you said the information about Uzumaki Kashina is not classified is it, so my professional curiosity should be no problem, she said. Reaching into a storage cabinet to retrieve some materials, Hiyashi had to fight a smirk from forming on his lips. Hayuga Hiyashi's reputation grew by 100 it was smaller than she had hoped when he set a small folder down on the desk. I'm sure this will be sufficient for your academic purposes, any further research you should be able to discover on your own, Hiyashi said, clearly observing her disappointment. With a grateful nod, Hanada took the folder and turned to go, but she was interrupted by a voice. He sighed deeply and sank farther into his chair. To answer your initial question, no, I am not ashamed of you, I am ashamed of myself. He said. When I look at you I see the splitting image of your mother looking right back at me. Hiyashi went on, holding up his hand to stop Hinata from speaking. I know this is no excuse, it is nothing more than a product of my own weakness, as a result I have been harsh with you in respect to your training. However there are facets about this clan that you are not aware of, I have done my best to shield you and your sister from the worst of it, he sighed. To Sama? Inquired Hinata. Failings from my past and your apparent lack of skill with our clan's techniques have only exacerbated the situation. Your lack of the Byakugan is detrimental and has caused some dissenting voices to gain strength. In short, I am proud of you even if I struggle to show it. You were blessed with the best parts of your mother, but were also cursed with my own weakness. I struggle to show the proper affection you and your sister deserve. For that I can only beg your forgiveness, he said as he raised his head. Hanada was absolutely taken aback, she had imagined this encounter countless times, she never would have imagined that it would end with her father apologizing and lowering his head to her. With a gentle smile, Hanada remarked, maybe instead of forgiving, we can work on mending our relationship, together. Hiyashi could be pardoned for mistaking Hinata's beaming face for his late wife's when he raised his head. How foolish I was to be so preoccupied with securing her future that I nearly ruined our own bond, but even with her excitement, he wasn't sure if his protection would be sufficient in the absence of the Byakugan. With a spring in her step, Hanada turned to open the door after saying goodbye to her father, exhausted from their conversation. She looked at her father right before she stepped through. As she directed a stream of chakra to her eyes, causing the veins to jut out and her vision to become extremely sharp, she remarked, by the way to Sama, if it's about the Byakugan that shouldn't be an issue. As she walked away, a small smile playing over her own features, Hanada closed the door behind her and turned off her eyes, she could hear someone laughing merrily behind the door. Hayuga Hiyashi's reputation rose by 600. Hayuga Hiyashi's reputation rose to neutral. Kiba tried to figure out, so let me get this straight, like a game with stat points and stuff. It may be difficult to accept, but, Hanada began. No, I think you're right, it's just kind of out there, Kiba responded. Just like that? Hanada questioned, trying to make sense of the circumstances. She had just spent the last hour explaining her abilities to her teammates. Shino had remained completely silent and Kiba had made an odd remark. Yes, exactly like that, replied Kiba. But why would you believe something like that so easily? She inquired. Why wouldn't I? Kiba questioned. It's not like you've ever lied to me before, so if you say you have some weird gamer bloodline thing, then that's that. Though Hinata was utterly perplexed, she had planned several ways to persuade her allies, like making an instant dungeon or instantly discovering the jutsu that the Kirin had dropped at the conclusion of her previous mission. With hesitation, she turned to face Shino, who had remained silent until now. Shino spoke up as if sensing her gaze on him. It is as Kiba said, why? Because you are our teammate and have no reason to lie to us. Such an ability would also explain several inconsistencies Kiba and myself have noticed since we became a team, Shino said. Hanada sniffed, everyone, feeling her nerves go out of her body. You see, Kurinai said, putting a consoling hand on Hanada's head. You had nothing to worry about. Yes, this is going to be fantastic, Kiba exclaimed. Man I can't wait to start abusing that ability of yours, oh man it's going to be sweet when you get that party system. We don't even know the details of that yet, and in any case that will be no excuse for you to get lazy, said Kurinai. As you may know the Chunin exams are being hosted in Konoha this time and will start in a little over a month's time. I take it you plan to enter us in this competition sensei, replied Shino. Yes, normally I would not have even considered entering a rookie squad like you into the exams. 
The Chunin exams are dangerous, and are filled with people on the same level or even stronger than those missing Nin you fought. Man, they were pretty tough enough, Kiba complained. Yet despite a disadvantage in experience you managed to win. You all have a lot of potential and this exam will be good experience for you. I don't expect you all to pass that would be unreasonable. However since the exam will take place in Konoha this will be the closest I can get to a controlled environment to test you in. There is more to it than that, right sensei, replied Shino. As perceptive as ever, Kuranai complimented. Kuranai held up her hand to prevent any interruptions. One thing I noticed is that during the mission you all took your opponents back alive. Now in an ideal world this is the best option, it will mean information for the village and killing should never be so comfortable that it is your go-to option. But answer me this, what if they were about to kill a hostage, what if they had sensitive information that if disclosed would have cost hundreds of lives, she said and took a moment to digest it. In times like these it may be necessary to act decisively. Hanada, you said killing your opponent would be the easy way out, and sometimes that is true. But conversely, leaving a dangerous foe alive due to your own fear can also be a danger. I pray that each of you is able to recognize that situation when the time comes. Each member of Team Aid took a short while to process this new knowledge. Though Hanada could understand her sensei's words, she was unsure of the appropriate course of action until she was placed in that circumstance. Kuranai gestured for their attention with her hands, sensing the melancholy that had settled over the group. Right that's enough moping. These are questions that you don't have to have the answers to right away, take your time and think it over, find an answer that you can be satisfied with. In the meantime we have a long month ahead of us to prepare for the Chunin exams, so prepare yourself because I'm going to put you three through hell, she grinned. But for right now, Team 8 our next mission is to eat as much barbecue as we can, on me. Do you accept this perilous mission? Yes, Sensei, they all said at once. Kiba complained, you know, your ability is bullshit, as Team 8 trudged toward training ground 19. Kuranai yelled, language, and gave Kiba a hard headshake. I apologize, Kiba-kun, Hanada said. Shino trailed behind the two at a slow pace, saying, he is just jealous of your ability, though I must admit your resistance to physical fatigue is useful. Sensei, please remind me once more why we are sparring with another squad. Some of us are really tired, Kiba exclaimed, drawing a sympathetic chuckle from Akamaru. Kuranai shook her head, surveying her group. Since Hanada's revelation a week prior, she had intensified her training and concentrated solely on her physical growth and mastery of Genjutsu. It would not be the best use of her time to pile on a ton of new techniques because she had a limited amount of time before the Chunin exams. It's better to stick to the fundamentals. Furthermore, she knew that Shino and Kiba were getting extra instruction at home. The two genin that Hinata still had were also pushed to their limits, as she was capable of withstanding an extremely high level of physical conditioning. Because Kiba, in the real world you don't always have the luxury of going into a fight at full strength. Sometimes you have to make do with what you have. Especially if you guys plan to do well in the Chunin exams, she said. Kiba complained, but Hanada isn't even tired. That may be true, but she is also going to have a handicap. Very few people know that she's unlocked her Baikugan, so she is going to have to fight without its use. She's also low on chakra from training so it will be a challenge for her as well. Hanada grimly nodded, realizing that her chakra was low. Hanada Hayuga the player's class title. Jenin, with CP and HP added. Instructor. Kuranai. Add 50% to Genjutsu learning rates, plus 1 point for wisdom and intelligence for every level up. Express. 16 to advance to level 720, 6996 and 555 50ths HP. CP. 276 hundreds, power. 30, 10, 10. Dexterity. 57, 6.27. 38, 4.94, 10. Agility Vitality. 10, 30. Cognitive Ability. 29, 10. Sensibility. 44, 4.84, 10. Charm Points. 9 Present Situation. Timid. Minus 20% experience gained through Jukan techniques and minus 20% reputation gains below friendly. Flexible joints. Plus 2 level specific dexterity. Plus 50% travel to. 
abilities as well as jutsu. Point. 54 Benefit, Nun Ryo, 17,040. Positively, her techniques were little less expensive once they mastered the water walking exercise. Sensei, may we know who our opponents are now? Shino asked as Team Aid approached the training area. I believe that will be readily apparent in a moment Shino. A voice rang out throughout the clearing, dynamic entry. Before Kiba felt something hard hit his face and sent him flying across the floor, all he saw was a green blur. The man said, Excellent Lee Kun, your form was much better that time, with a green spandex outfit that appeared to hug his body. Another figure, dressed in bright green spandex, exclaimed, Yash, thank you my youthful comrade for allowing me to practice my technique, and struck the nice guy pose. Guy said, what a young display of camaraderie, with tears in his eyes. Guy Sensei. Lee Kun. Guy Sensei. Lee Kun. With a desperate cry, Shino dropped to one knee. Kai. He moaned as he battled to regain consciousness. What kind of foul illusion is this, to think that our training over the past week was for nothing? Minus 10 HP 10 HP Hinata had seen this before and quickly closed her eyes, blocking out the flaming dusk of her youth. Kuranai cried out, Guy, that's enough, as she launched a barrage of kanai at the two. Guy corrected, Kuranai-san, that was most unyouthful, stepping aside to avoid the onslaught. Kuranai muttered to herself, Damn, I still can't dispel that thing, looks like I need to redouble my training. Kuranai quickly shook her head to gather her thoughts and realized why they were in this place. She reprimanded, Guy, we came here to spar not to witness your bonding session with your pupil, and it seemed like that made Guy pay attention again. Ah quite right, he replied. Neji, Tenten, come, your youthful opponents have arrived. Amidst a whirl of leaves, two figures materialized beside Lee as Guy was speaking. The girl was slightly taller than Hanada, standing at about five feet. Her striking gray eyes and dark brown hair, tied into two buns atop her head, gave her a panda-like appearance. She had on a pink, kipau style blouse with no sleeves, yellow fastening buttons, and red sleeve trimmings. It appeared as though the blouse was tailored to give the shoulders more room to move. She also had on a pair of dark green shinobi pants with a tiny gray pouch fastened to them. Her forehead shield was tucked under her bangs and wrapped around her head. The second individual had distinctive Hyuga features and stood at about 5 feet and 2 inches. His long brown hair fell loosely in a ponytail to the middle of his back, revealing a fair, pale complexion. His face was a permanent sneer, and his featureless white eyes seemed to be trying to bore into Hinata's own. He was dressed in dark brown shorts and a beige shirt. His right leg and arm were also covered in bandages. He had on a black forehead protector that fit his head unusually snug. Neji looked at them scornfully and said, Sensei, when you told us that we would be sparring today, I assumed you found opponents that would be a challenge. This is a complete waste of my time. Fate has already decreed that we will be the victors. Try not to be so nasty, Neji, the Kunoichi growled. The girl glanced at their teammate, who was lying on the ground, and said, Sorry about him, I'm Tenten and this is Neji. And you've already met Lee it seems. Hanada had been curious about her cousin's team for some time. She had observed that occasionally, after a long training session, Neji would twitch in his brow or tighten his hands, but it was uncommon to see the cool-headed and collected Neji upset or agitated. As he slowly got to his feet, Kiba asked, D did anyone get the number of that carriage? Kiba was still getting up when Shino came up to Kuranai. Sensei I assume these are our opponents for today? That's right Shino, team guy have been active for a year now so there is a lot you could learn from them. This will be a good test of your abilities and will allow you to see the level of the opponents you will face in the exams. Tenten muttered, exams, um, excuse me Kuranai sensei but don't you think it's a bit soon for them to be entering the exams? Lee cried out, Tenten chan, who are we to put out their fires of youth? Yosh, to see my underclassmen trying so hard. I will show them an excellent performance in this exam or I will run round Konoha five times on my hands. Guy said, Lee, what amazing dedication, while striking a nice guy expression. Guy Sensei. Lee Kun. Guy Sensei. Lee Kun. Tenten yelled, no, as she unleashed a hail of kanai blows on the two, once per day maximum. 
Tenton smiled back at Hinata's sympathetic flash of a smile. To answer your question Tenton, while it may be early for a rookie team to compete, this is the best opportunity to expose them to the exam in a relatively controlled environment. It will be a couple of years before Konoha is hosting again, Kuranai said to pique the interest of the other girl. With that in mind, we're burning daylight here. Hanada, Tenton would the two of you mind starting us off? Quest formulated the weapon mistress of Konoha. Goal. Overcome Tenton dual reward. 2000 Ryo and 2000 EXP. Why, and Hanada was aware that, aside from her academy sparring, this would be her first encounter with a Kunoichi. She knew that fighting without her by Kugan would put her at a disadvantage, but she wanted to save that for the exam. She was used to being underestimated, but this time it would be due to the ignorance of her opponent. She had not really had much opportunity to observe her peers, and she was deliberately avoiding scanning Neji Nisan, even though she wondered how she compared to her foe. Higurashi Tenten's name title, Mistress of Junior Weapons. 20th level HP. 450 CP. 250 250ths. Power. 6374 for dexterity 63 is the agility. Vitality. 3529 intelligence level knowledge. 32. Charm. 12 situation Genin Konoha. Synopsis Tenten's parents were killed while delivering a shipment of weapons to Suna, leaving her as an orphan growing up. Tenten is the only owner of the Higurashi weapons store in Konoha as a result. She would frequently make weapons with the forge as a child in remembrance of her parents. Tenten had originally intended to follow in the footsteps of Tsunade of the Densetsu no Sanin, Tsunade of the Three Legendary Ninja, as a medic ninja, but she has since modified her goals to become the leading weapons mistress globally and to overtake Tsunade as the strongest woman on the planet. Tenten has vowed not to allow herself become enraged with her team, which often drives her crazy. Jutsu Rising Twin Dragons, so sure you. A silent, strong, Hanada said to herself. Tenten's stats were far higher than she had anticipated, but she would need to be very strong to be on Neji Nisan's team. Her ability to observe had recently reached a new level, so she was given a quick glimpse of the moves her opponent was aware of, though it still didn't explain what the move actually accomplished. Kuranai warned, remember this is just a spar, now I want a nice clean fight, are you both ready, Hajime? Tenten allowed her hands to drop to the pouch around her waist as soon as the fight started, and before Hinata could notice, they were already snaking up as they launched two shuriken. Hinata was struck in the shoulder by both projectiles and had to instantly suppress the urge to use her by Kugan. Minus 25 HP without wasting any time, the older girl took advantage of Hinata's hesitation to turn around and continue to batter her with sharpened steel. You're going to have to react faster than that, Come on is standing there all you can do? Tenten's eyes briefly met Hinata's, and she was startled out of her reverie. As Hinata studied the approaching projectiles, she let a layer of chakra settle over her hands. She said, by Kugan or not, you're going to have to do better than that Tenten san, as her hands shot out of the air in a blur. Tenten halted her advance momentarily and exclaimed, no way. Hinata seized the opportunity and advanced, trying to get close enough to strike. Tenten yelled, I don't think so, taking a tiny scroll out of her pouch. Unexpectedly quickly, Tenten unfolded the scroll to confront Hinata and unleashed a minor volley of weaponry. Tenten exclaimed, take that, but as Hinata leapt into the air like a rabbit and soared over the weapons, her smirk vanished. Tenten angrily said, big mistake, and took another scroll out of her pouch. You're a sitting duck in the air. The rest of Team Guy and Team 8 were observing from the sidelines with intense focus. Neji muttered, a failure like her is destined to lose, as always. Kiba snarled, oi take that back bastard, as Akamaru exposed his fangs to the other boy. He raised his eyebrows at his fellow Jen and Neji and replied, if you fail to see the gap in their skill then that is your issue, it was a fundamental tactical flaw to become airborne against a range she were more competent she would have used Kaden, rotation, and maintained her ground. Shino chose to intervene during this argument, saying, you seem to be laboring under a misassumption. Hanada could see the newly formed onslaught of weapons coming straight towards her from her elevated position. Ignoring the rotating mass of metal, Hanada began to form hand seals with calm determination. She felt the chakra rising in her throat as she raised her weapon, 
and even though her body temperature started to rise gradually, she persisted. She did not see her opponent's victorious expression smolder and turn to ash until she had opened her mouth. Neji gave Shino a look of disbelief as he concluded, saying, Why you may ask? Because Hanada is not a weak little girl like you seem to believe, she is strong. Just watch. Kaden. Enden, bullet of flame released. A gout of flame shot forth from her open maw, burning the approaching projectiles. The flames struck the spot where Tenten had been standing, and she hurriedly ducked out of the way. The earth sizzled and baked, the heat cracking the ground. Tenten was only thinking about how Hanada's descent towards the ground made her appear to be a dragon in flight. That that was dangerous, Tenten said, squinting her eyes. Tenten reached behind her again and pulled out another scroll, but this one was black instead of the usual green. I would run if I were you. She unleashed an overwhelming volley of kanai, too many to tally, as she unfolded the scroll. However, there were a few sizzling tags mixed in with these kanai. Hanada's eyes widened at this and she started to run frantically for the tree line. She could hear her doom's whistling sound slicing through the air above her head. She was swept off her feet and into the undergrowth as she approached, as she felt an explosion behind her. The clever thing about this attack, though, was that you would be hit by explosions even if you were hit by the initial barrage. On the other hand, if the explosions missed their target, the kanai, driven by the explosive force, would accomplish the task. Because of this, Hanada saw multiple kanai racing in her direction, and all she could do was raise her arms in front of her. Question not accepted Konoha's mistress weapons. Goal. Overcome Tenten dual reward. 2000 Ryo and 2000 EXP. After a sobering experience today, Team 8 found themselves walking back to the village in a solemn manner. Even though Kiba was still recovering the ability to move most of his limbs, he was starting to understand why the Hyuga clan had such a formidable reputation. At most, his match had been one-sided, if that's even a nice way to put it. Upon approaching, he was unable to move and ended up face down on the ground as none of his tactics worked. This match amply demonstrated the superiority of the Taijutsu practitioner. With his arms cradling his bruised ribs and his glasses cracked, Shino was faring even worse. At first, he believed he could defeat his opponent by simply draining his chakra and winning, just like he did Subaru. Sadly, it turned out that this was just wishful thinking. He failed to consider the raw power of his opponent. In an instant, Lee tore through his swarm and narrowed the gap. The next thing Shino knew, his world was exploding with pain and he was out cold. In contrast to Subaru, Lee went in for the kill right away. This made it clear that he needed to strengthen his defenses and quicken the rate at which his insects could deplete chakra. He would need to speak with his father again on this. In contrast to her teammates, Hanada spent most of her time reflecting and trying to make sense of what had transpired during her fight. After that final attack, the match was declared in Tenten's favor because the girl had a lot more ammunition and neither Junin wanted to be in charge of field repairs afterwards. But Hanada was still focused on winning the battle, she was unaware that it could also be used in that manner. So how do you feel after facing Konoha's most powerful Genin squad? Asked Kuranai. How do we feel? Sensei we got wrecked, how do you think we feel? Kiba was upset. I must concur, it was most disheartening to be defeated so easily, Shino grumbled. Hanada, meanwhile, did not say anything but nodded her head. Kuranai said as they continued to walk, good. For a brief while, the team waited for more remarks while walking in silence, until eventually Kiba lost patience. What do you mean good? Come on sensei, give us more than that. Kuranai gave a shake of her head, knowing that Kiba would be the first to lose it. As they got closer to the main road, she said, I meant what I said, it's good that you see that there are people in your own age group that are more powerful than you. I didn't want you to become conceited with your victory recently, in this world there's always someone better. Observing that she had induced a mood of depression in her genin, she gave them each a hard tap on the head. But that doesn't mean you should give up now, does it? I meant what I said, Team Guy is the strongest genin squad currently in rotation and each of you were matched up against your worst possible opponent. After giving it some thought, all of the genin realized that she was correct. Kiba had faced a foe who was more adept at his particular skill and could easily neutralize his combination attacks. 
Shino had faced a foe who could exploit his physical weakness and relied less on chakra to carry out his maneuvers. Because she had faced a fighter with a great deal of Jukan fighting experience, Hanada never let herself get close enough to be struck. On the whole I think each of you did remarkably well, what you lacked was not strength but experience, and that will come with time. Kuranai nodded to the guards as they arrived at the main gate, and they were let inside. Don't worry, we still have a little time left until the exams. The whole point of today was to highlight your weaknesses. Take tomorrow off and spend some time thinking things over, when we pick back up I'll be running you into the ground again. Following that, the group bid farewell, with the two male members lost in contemplation. As Hanada was heading back home, she heard what she thought was coming from behind her. Something cried out from behind, Oi, Hanada. As she passed through the gates, she recognized four individuals, one of whom had a bright orange jumpsuit on. Team 7 was back on the road, Hanada Hayuga. The player's class title, Jenin, with CP and HP added. Instructor. Kuranai. Add 50% to Jinjutsu learning rates, plus 1 point for wisdom and intelligence for every level up. Express. 16 to advance to level 720, 6996 and 550 HP. CP. 276 hundreds, power. 30, 10, 10. Dexterity. 57, 6.27. 38. 4.94, 10, Agility Vitality, 10, 30. Cognitive Ability, 29, 10, Sensibility, 44, 4.84, 10. Charm Points, 9 Present Situation, Timid, minus 20% Experience Gained Through Jukan Techniques and minus 20% Reputation Gains Below Friendly. Flexible Joints, plus 2 Level Specific Dexterity, plus 50% travel to abilities as well as jutsu point 54 benefit nun rio 17040 ability accounting 10 proficient in mathematics and bookkeeping in motion 5 the capacity to conceal one's feelings the chakra flow 30 boosts both strength and agility by 36 percent gratitude one gains in reputation with those who are friendly and above increased by five percent Cooking 1. 5% more effective when prepared food is used. Find poison 1. 1% possibility of finding poison in something eaten or discovered. Gamers Association Maximum gives the user access to a body that plays games. Restore HP, CP, and any abnormal status effects after sleeping in a bed. Mastery of Genjutsu 20 reduce Genjutsu's chakra cast by 11%. 10% more difficulty will be required to dispel your genjutsu. Hand securing 15 15% faster hand seals. Quick creation of dungeons 4, training area, customized training area, rabbit dungeon, dungeon. Quick dungeon escape 4 the capacity to quickly flee a dungeon. Jukan 18 increased dexterity by 11% passively. Wisdom is increased passively by 11%. Leaf clinging maximum cut the price of chakras for all methods by 20%. Note 40 Learn details about individuals, things, or places. Project Killing Intent 4 Get the opportunity to scare an adversary. Sprinting 25 Agility is increased passively by 13%. Covert 15 Stealth is increased by 15% passively. Climbing trees maximum 10% off the cost of all chakra techniques. Swimming in the water maximum 10% off the cost of all chakra techniques. Kanai and Shuriken level weaponry 17. Damage from Kanai and Shuriken is passively increased by 17%. Hanada watched as Team 7 lumbered through the gate, their return appearing somewhat victorious with the setting sun at their backs. The Uchiha had his hands buried deep in his pockets, while Sakura busied herself fussing over Sasakai. His face was scowling as he tried to ignore his friend's gentle attentions. Seeing his mark in front of him, Naruto bowled past Kakashi, causing the silver-haired Junin to sigh in agony as he watched his dysfunctional team. With a grin that split his face, Naruto kept running up to Hinata while waving his hand in the air. We're back, Dadbeo, he exclaimed, putting his hands behind his head and grinning mischievously at her. 
Naruto was giddy with excitement even after returning from a mission, and she couldn't stop laughing. She greeted him warmly, welcome back, amazed by his enthusiasm. Hey Kakashi Sensei, I'm going to tell Hinata about our awesome mission, you guys can report to Gigi right? He said, turning away from her and turning to face his team. Naruto, you can't just blow off a mission briefing because you want to go chat with Hinata. Sakura grumbled. She turned to face Uchiha and said, and Hinata don't encourage him. Uck why can't you be more laid back like Sasakai kun He gave a grumpy. Don't involve me in your pointless squabbles, and turned to leave her. With a placatory wave of his hands, Kakashi said, Well, it seems like everyone is a bit tired. Tell you what, I'll go report to Hokage-sama. The rest of you get some rest, Team 7 is on leave for the next two days. After receiving confirmation, Naruto started talking to Hinata quickly without even feigning recognition from his sensei. You're way too easygoing, sensei, Sakura complained. He spoke incoherently, then vanished into a whirl of leaves. Now, now. It's not every day you have a run-in with a missing nin on a mission. You should take it easy while it lasts. Big things are coming up soon, he said. Sakura exclaimed, Wait, sensei. Uck, what did he mean by big things? Hinata you're lucky to have a normal sensei. Now that Team 7 was focused on her, Hinata had to fight the impulse to squish her fingers together. Um. Sakura-san I think Kakashi Sensei was referring to the Chunin selection exams that will take place in Konoha soon. The admission caused Sasuke's eyebrow to rise, and Sakura's expression changed to one of comprehension. Oh that makes sense, I didn't know Konoha was hosting them next, Sakura replied. Naruto asked, the who's a what now? With extreme disbelief, Sasuke asked, the exam's Dobi, you want to become Hokage and you don't even know how to advance to Chunin. Hey, shut it Teme, Naruto exclaimed, stepping up to confront Sasakai. Instead of trying to make me Dobi, why don't you demonstrate the power you used to defeat the ice user? He exclaimed, his eyes going completely red and the sharing and whirling erratically. He had been on edge since the mission's conclusion. This untalented nobody had appeared out of nowhere. After only a few months, he went from being at the bottom of the class to standing shoulder to shoulder with him. Where he had failed, Naruto had succeeded, in fact, he might have perished in a wave if not for the dobi. It was perplexing and terrifying. He was barely measuring up to the class clown, so how was he supposed to measure up to Itachi? He wanted to fight Naruto to see how much he had improved, even though he hated to admit it. But before things got violent, one of the boys put a hand on each of their shoulders. Friends shouldn't fight. Once exams start, there will be plenty of that to go around. Hinata remarked softly but surprisingly authoritatively. The two boys appeared to lose interest in each other as Sasakai turned off his sharing in. Sasakai turned to face her head on and took a moment to study the girl in front of him. He appraising Ly remarked, You, you're less meek than you were before. You never would have stuck your nose in back at the academy. It was true that the old Hinata would never have ventured to interfere, however, people and things change. Hanada gave him a brief nod of agreement before saying, the academy was a long time ago Sasakai-san. Rookie of the year, dead last, and all those titles are meaningless now. None of us are the same as we were back then, if you keep clinging to that idea you'll never grow. That moment, which was an uncomfortably close echo of his own thoughts, caused Sok's face to freeze. But you've seen that first hand right? I don't know what happened on your mission but if you dealt with a missing nin then you know that there are people out there who are incredibly strong, and even you will need a team behind you to back you up," Hinata said as Sasakai turned his gaze away from her. I can tell that you and Naruto-kun are rivals, but remember that you're also teammates, equals. Looking down on each other won't serve anything. Imagine what you could do if you worked together instead. Sasakai suddenly had visions of releasing Kakashi from Zabaza's water prison. They had been in sync even though they were different. Together, they had managed to achieve something that neither of them could have done alone. HMPH, for such a quiet girl you talk too much, must be Dobi's influence. Uchiha Sasuke's reputation rose by 75 with growing annoyance, Naruto said, Teme, apologize to Hinata-chan. HMPH, jumping to your girlfriend's defense Dobi. Gee girlfriend? Hinata blurted, blushing slightly. Don't worry she has a point, I'd rather spar with you when you're at your best, 
I guess the Chunin exam finals will have to do. Naruto's eyes narrowed momentarily as he took in what his opponent had said before beaming broadly. You're on Teme, he declared while putting out his fist. Sasakai smirked as they bumped fists, saying, bring it Dobi. Hanada turned on her heel, grinned, and started to move away. Although she was happy to have eased the tension, she was a little miffed that she was getting no attention. That's all well and good but, you need to make it to the finals first, and I hate to break it to you but I'm stronger than both of you. She turned to face away as she left. Reputation rose by 50% with Uchiha Sasakai. Uzumaki Naruto's reputation increased by 50%. Charm grew by one. Charm grew by one. With a stunned sense of pride, Sasakai exclaimed, Hey, Hayuga get back here. Naruto exclaimed, No fair Hinata-chan no cutting and running, as Hinata kept strolling off, a satisfied smile on her face. Soon after, Hinata and Naruto were by themselves cruising Konoha's streets. After realizing that their behavior was childish, Sasakai crept back to the Uchiha compound, but Hinata thought she caught a glimpse of a smile. With no clear destination in sight, the two set off on a wandering journey. Hinata saw Naruto's smile fading as they traveled and the civilian population giving them stern looks. It was short-lived because he soon had a new smile on his face. Hinata scowled at what she saw. The phony smile was akin to an uncomfortable mask that was having trouble fitting his face. It annoyed her since it was incorrect and a distortion of his typical smile. Unconsciously, she extended her hand to hold his, providing her with unspoken support. Her face turned scarlet as soon as she realized what she had done, but she persisted. Naruto started, Hina, as he found himself abruptly being dragged along by a resentful Hayuga heiress. Whoa, hold up a second. Through the crowd, Hanada bobbed and weaved, followed by a disheveled Uzumaki. She attempted to give onlookers a stern look as she went by, but most would have thought it was just a cute pout. The two eventually arrived at an abandoned training area, and while they were traveling, Hanada's hold on Naruto's hand grew steadily stronger. He called out to Hanada-chan, but she did not answer, even though he was trying to free his hand from her hold. Oi, Hina, he said, piercing her side with his free hand to get her attention as she turned to show that she was crying. Hanada, what's wrong? Ta-chan, he frantically waved his free arm. She was able to wipe the tears from her eyes with both of her hands after he released his. Among the many things Uzumaki Naruto claimed to be good at, eating ramen, pulling practical jokes, and being the frontrunner for the position of Hokage, consoling weeping girls was not one of them. She was wiping her eyes when she felt two arms suddenly come around her, making her tense. She looked up and saw that her hair was spiky and her eyes were ocean blue. She giggled, W what are you doing? With a quick release, Naruto seemed to have touched molten lava. He trailed off, staring down as if his shoes were the most fascinating thing in the world, W well, whenever I'm sad, I always wish that someone would give me a hug so. I dunno, I guess I thought it would make you feel better. That's just like Naruto-kun, always thinking about others. Hanada took the initiative, pulling his head into her shoulder and encircling him with her arms. She had to reach up to his neck and thought, he's grown taller, she looked up at him, her fingers tingling from his golden locks. His expression was one of confusion and concern. She knew he was worried, and she wished that worry would extend to him as well. Hanada-chan? He asked, making her grasp tighten. You're sad, so I'm giving you a hug. Naruto objected, B but I'm not depressed. She lifted her head to meet his, looking directly into his eyes and saying, liar. He would leap in front of a mob of bullies to save a timid young girl, but he wouldn't rely on other people to save him, and she both loved and hated that about him. But I'm no, liar, she uttered as he shifted beneath her uncomfortable stare. That smile, she muttered, frustratedly chewing her lower lip. I hate that fake smile you wear to try and hide the pain. Naruto tried to escape her clutches after being startled, but she clung tightly. I detest how you constantly feel the need to reassure people, she uttered, seemingly daring him to disagree. It's okay to be angry, it's okay to be sad, everyone feels that way sometimes. What's not okay is to keep it all to yourself. She watched the emotions vying for control on his face as she said this, keeping her eyes fixed on his. First came skepticism, which quickly gave way to annoyance, which in turn lost the war against reflection before surrendering to acceptance. 
He leaned into Hinata's embrace, and she felt his shoulders slump. He softly said, giving into the embrace, I thought I had gotten used to all the stares, you know? Watching him like this was strange. Brighter than the sun, more transcendent and fierce, was Uzumaki Naruto. He would relentlessly chip away at any obstacles in his way, and eventually even the tiniest stream would find its way through the biggest mountain. It was not the Uzumaki Naruto she had imagined when she saw him looking so weak. There are insecurities even in Naruto-kun, but I knew that deep down. He began, I guess after wave I thought things would be different, sounding increasingly tired. They called me a hero, they cheered for me. I never knew how happy that would make me. I know I always say I want to be Hokage, that then people would acknowledge me, but the people of Wave. They did Hinata, they really did. She felt the tremor in his shoulder as well as the rhythmic droplets of something warm and wet hitting her shoulder. Trying to coax the story out of him, she asked softly, what happened in Wave Naruto-kun? Naruto started out by narrating the mission in Wave. There was a bridge builder, old man Tazuna, he was trying to free his people from a rich bastard named Gato. As he was telling his story, Naruto withdrew and they sat down next to each other, her hand still firmly in his. When Hinata met one of the seven swordsmen of the mist on their first journey outside the village, she was taken aback that someone could have even worse luck than her group, he really had the devil's luck. It was evident to Hinata that Naruto was greatly impacted by the boy Haku. As he talked about him, he instinctively tightened his hold on her hand. It's uncanny how Naruto can make an enemy become a friend, but that's what made him unique. He was naturally charismatic, and he was unaware of it. As he told her the boy's fate, she could feel his agony. She was taken aback by Zabuza's sudden change of heart, daring to charge the field in order to exact revenge on a loved one. She thought it was brave and hoped she would never be in a situation like that. Old man Tazuna, Inari and all the people of Wave, they made me feel like a hero. It's just tough to come back to Konoha and have people stare at me all because of the queue because of something I have no control over, he said while interrupting himself. Because of queue? Wondered Hinata. He said, I guess I'm tired of being alone. But you're not alone, Hinata uttered as truthfully as she could. With everything in her, she attempted to express that feeling. You're not alone because I'll always be here, she comforted him, holding his hand. For some reason, the majority of Konoha seems to despise Naruto despite the fact that he is a mystery with little information about his family or past. At her comment, Naruto seemed to flinch. His body trembled slightly in shock, and his eyes were downcast. He said, they'll just hate you too, in a quiet, worn out, and defeated voice. Hanada proclaimed, I don't care, to me, Naruto-kun is a hero. With caution, he met her gaze and questioned, but why? She reflected, I used to be so afraid, and sometimes I still am. Back when I was little a group of bullies cornered me, they were going to teach me a lesson for being so, stuck up, I was terrified, I just wanted to sink into the ground and disappear. He asked, what happened? And Hinata smiled warmly at him. You did. Her admission surprised Naruto because he hadn't remembered that. She expressed sadness at being called out and said, you got hurt because of me. You swept in and took on all the bullies. But to me you were a hero. You've always been my hero Naruto-kun. That secret is classified as S the Hokage and Naruto himself are the only ones who can reveal that. He appeared so little, he appeared so scared and little. His exuberance had vanished, his confidence had crumbled, and his frailties had come to light. His expression was so meek, as if he were afraid to raise his hopes. He looked at her with equal parts fear and longing. Her heart broke for it. They call me a monster when they think I'm not listening. Frustrated, she wanted to swear. Years worth of insecurities were bubbling to the surface, demonstrating that the dam had broken. Even though she wasn't entirely sure what was going on, she could tell that a lot of people had failed Naruto, and she wasn't going to be one of them. You're not a monster, she firmly declared. You're Uzumaki Naruto, Konohagakure Shinobi, future Hokage and most importantly my friend. As she had hoped, Naruto appeared to smile upon hearing her words. His troubled expression started to fade, and a tiny smile appeared on his lips. She wasn't sure if she should ask him again, it would be dangerous, but she had a suspicion. The pieces fit, though she might be mistaken. 
It's just tough to come back to Konoha and have people stare at me all because of the queue. Thanks Hinata-chan. Other than Aruka sensei you're the first person to believe that I can become Hokage, he replied. Either now or never. With a serious expression, she said, that's because I know that you are destined for great things, getting ready for what lay ahead. I don't know how the Kiyubi is involved, but Naruto-kun is Naruto-kun. His face took on a look of shock and terror as he instinctively attempted to remove his hand. Hanada refused to let go of him at this moment. Fear swept through him again as he asked, How do you know about Kiyubi? I didn't, not for sure anyway. However you just confirmed that it is involved, she replied gently. But as I said, Naruto-kun is Naruto-kun. Many things about Uzumaki Naruto were inexplicable. Most people had simply never bothered to look. They were so thoroughly duped by the trickster's disguise that they never considered the possibility of anything more profound. Maybe they were just unwilling to? On October 10th, the night of the Kiyubi attack, he was born and that night he became an orphan. That was not all that unusual in and of itself. There were a lot of orphans that night. But how many of those orphans caught the Sandame Hokage's attention directly? How many of those orphans were viewed as if they were just a crime, a plague, simply existing? Nevertheless, Naruto was given an unheard of degree of freedom in spite of this cruel treatment. You can be sure that the inside of a cell would be the next thing that anyone who had vandalized a national monument would be seeing. No, Naruto was being kept just far enough away to be called upon in an emergency. Naruto appeared to be at war with himself once more. He lifted his top to reveal his stomach, suggesting that in the end, the group that wished to trust Hinata prevailed. A quick application of chakra resulted in the formation of a spiraling seal on the skin. Though Hinata lacked expertise in Fuinjutsu, she was naturally drawn to the art for other reasons. Even she could discern that the seal before her was far more intricate than the bird seal in a cage. Taking a deep breath, he said, everyone thinks that the Yandaimi killed the Kiyubi. He said, dying silently, as he awaited the rejection, but that's not true. The Kiyubi, it got sealed into me when I was a baby. I'm something that's called a Jinchuriki. Hanada slipped closer without pausing, encircling him with her arms. Baka, she murmured. Hanada chan Naruto no Baka, she exclaimed, drawing him nearer. A scroll does not become a kanai just because you seal one into it. Naruto-kun is Naruto-kun. Her words, that's the last I want to hear about that, silenced him before he could react. Sitting in friendly silence, the two were wrapped in one another's arms. Their minds were racing, trying to process all that had been disclosed. Now that Hinata knew how much of a burden her friend had been carrying, his upbeat and brilliant personality was even more remarkable. She wanted to shield that smile of his, if she could. In the meantime, Naruto experienced pure, unadulterated joy. Somehow, this felt even better than when Uruka had acknowledged him, which had made him so happy. This helped calm his fears, though he had been secretly scared of what would happen if anyone his age found out about his fluffy little problem. He couldn't help but remember what Haku had said. He now had an additional precious person to look out for. As he gave her a closer squeeze and exclaimed, Hanada-chan, thank you for being my friend, Naruto freely displayed his happiness. Reputation grew by 1000 with Uzumaki Naruto. Now, Uzumaki Naruto's reputation is honored. Compassion rose by one. Compassion rose by one. Charm grew by one. Charm grew by one. She firmly stated, no matter what happens, there is one thing you can always count on. Naruto-kun, I will always be your friend. Query S-U-C-C-E-S-S-E-D scorns reason goal. Discover why the locals despise Naruto. Bonus goal. Present the truth to Naruto primarily, 8000XP. Bonus. One reward point bonus award, the Kiyubi insignia. You are now at a higher level. The gathered Jonin watched tolerantly as their Hokage went through the papers before him. Here is and paused on one file in particular, Sabaku no Gara, and sighed slightly. The youngest son of the Yandaimi case cage. Despite the boy's apparent mental instability based on the reports he had received, Konoha thought it would be politically foolish to deny him access to the Chunin exams since their relationship was already tense. Shikaku, have the preparations been made for the amendments to the exam structure? He inquired. Shikaku agreed with the modifications made to the exam, 
Even though he might not have liked the last minute work that had been thrown on his lap, it wouldn't hurt to put in a little extra effort to sort through the competition, especially since two Jin Shuriki are competing this year. Well, it was tough pulling it off last minute but we should be good to go. Though this won't have much effect of the ones that are ready, but it should weed out some of the representatives from the smaller villages, Shikaku thought. Very good, something tells me this exam isn't going to run as smoothly as previous years. The fewer genin we have to watch over the better, Hiruzen stated. Hiruzen looked around at the other Jonin in the space. Kakashi, are you certain your team is ready for this? Kakashi snapped his book closed and tilted his head to one side. Rubbing his chin thoughtfully, he mumbled, Hum, I wonder. Kakashi, Hiruzen uttered in a foreboding manner. Kakashi stood up straight and tried not to appear frightened, saying, Apologies, Hokage-sama. Kurenai scolded, Can't you be serious for once, Kakashi? Now, now, despite what you may think, I'm always serious, Kakashi said, drawing shocked looks from everyone in the room. So cold, well despite your ringing endorsement I honestly can't say if my team is ready. In an attempt to defuse the escalating argument, he held up a hand and said, what I mean to say is that all three of my students have potential, but despite our recent run in with Zabuza they still don't really understand the realities of being a shinobi. Kakashi deduced from his statement. It's my hope that by pitting them against others in their own age group they'll see just how far they have to go, and that there is only so much they can do alone. Asuma questioned, don't you think that's a bit of a gamble? Kakashi observed the acknowledgement on their faces and remarked, well, I imagine that both of you are having similar thoughts. Since the exam is in Konoha, what better time than now to give them some experience? Leaving Kakashi's, teaching methods aside, Asuma how is your team progressing? Hiruzen asked, still a little rough around the edges, but no complaints from me. Their teamwork is as good as expected, Ino keeps the boys in line. Choji still has some confidence issues to work out but he is coming along at a nice pace. Shikamaru is, well, no offense Shikaku but he's an ara. Not one taken, sighed Shikaku. As a team I have confidence that they could handle any other genin squad Konoha is fielding at the moment save for guys. Hum, I think someone is getting a bit too big for their britches, your team is not the only one with great teamwork, said Kurenai. On ICH I mean Kurenai-san, you know I didn't mean it like that, Asuma retracted her statement. Ah such youthful competition, Yash, it's decided if my team don't make it the farthest in this exam I will run round Konoha 30 times on my hands, Guy said. Speaking of that, it's not a bad idea. How about a friendly wager? Replied Kakashi. Terms, Asuma asked, if someone from Team 7 gets the farthest you guys have to buy me the Ika Ika Paradise signed collector's edition, the one with pictures, Kakashi chuckled. With nods of agreement from everyone but Kakashi, Asuma countered, fine but I amend the terms of the bet to the team that gets the most members becoming Chunin. It's all very well getting to the end of the exams but if you don't show the necessary skills then is it really a victory? You were hoping to muscle your way through, weren't you Kakashi? Said Kuranai. No comment. Fearfully, the others reached for their wallets as Asuma declared, if I win, then you guys have to foot our team's food bills for the rest of the year. Kurenai made the three men cringe when he said, fine but if we win then Kakashi has to burn his Ika Ika collection, Asuma has to quit smoking, and Guy has to never use the sunset of youth again. After increasing the stakes, the others appeared less assured. Ga, if that's the way it is then very well. If my youthful students win then all of you and your teams must join us every day for a year in our youthful morning exercise routine. Guy gasped. Before long, arguments broke out as the terms were worked out. Hiruzen, in the meantime, observed while he lit his pipe and took a gratifying puff. It seems they have forgotten me, damn you Minato. I'm getting too old for this. As Hinata was getting ready for the day, the sun was just beginning to rise. She had recently purchased some supplies from the market to keep food, equipment, and any other necessities in her inventory. Even her latest discovery was remarkably useful from her inventory. From the emptiness, Hinata withdrew a beautifully polished kanai. At its base, the word, Higurashi, appeared to be the manufacturer's mark. Yes, it would come in handy, she thought to herself as she put the weapon back. 
The Branch family was busy getting ready for the day ahead of them, and even at this early hour of the morning, there was a lot going on in the compound. Neji had probably already left the compound to meet with his team prior to the start of the exams. A wave of emotion welled up in her chest at the mere thought of the Chunin exams. She would have the chance to demonstrate that she was Chunin material in a matter of hours. She heard a training dummy striking a palm rhythmically as she emerged into the courtyard. A voice cried out, two palms, as two successive sounds rang out. The voice exclaimed, four palms, once more as the tempo picked up a gear. With her sister Hanabi in full view, Hanada could see that the person undergoing training was her sister. Hanabi cried, eight palms, and danced around the training dummy. This was an advanced technique that even a child as young as Hanabi could be learning, and Hanada was impressed. Hanada watched as Hanabi eased into the technique, but her form collapsed at the last moment. Her sister exclaimed, 16 pal ah. As her final round of hits went wide, Hanada approached her sister with deliberate noise to let Hanabi know she was there. Her movements were deliberate and slow. There was definitely a hint of Hyuga pride about young Hanabi, and it would not do to startle her. Hanabi-chan, Hanada asked hesitantly, knowing that her sister might become irritable if she didn't succeed. Hanada Oni-san, what are you doing here? Hanabi asked, trying to hide her blush as she picked herself up. Good morning Hanabi-chan, I was on my way to meet my team. Today is the first day of the Chunin exams, she said. Do you have time to be hanging around here then? Replied Hanabi. I always have time for my cute baby sister, Hanada remarked as she moved forward to give her sister a hug. Hanabi squawked in shame, Oni-chan. Hanada teased, Oni-chan now is it, as her sister transitioned to a more informal mode of address. Mo, Hanabi sulked as she managed to escape Hanada's hold. If you're not here to help with this jutsu then you should get going Hanada Oni-san, she said. While that raised an intriguing point, she had never before been able to apply the method. The technique was intended to get faster as it went on, just as Hanabi had struggled with the previous barrage of blows. She muttered, but now, she moved steadily closer to the object in front of her and lowered herself into a position. She spread her arms wide and lowered her center of gravity. Oni-san, Hanabi asked, startled. Hanada seemed to be triggered by Hanabi's words, flexing her fingers and launching herself forward. Two palms, the practice dummy was covered in marks from her body's tenkutsu even when her Bayakugan was not active. She struck the tenkutsu twice, starting at the chest, with the intent of severely impairing the circulatory system. Four palms, the subsequent blows were directed toward the arms to stop a retaliation. Eight palms, which doubled the number of strikes, were directed toward the torso in an effort to further obstruct the chakra's flow. At the very last, vital step, Hanada firmly planted her foot and let her arms fly, like a whirlwind of malice. Sixteen palms, Jukenho, Hake Jiroku show, gentle fist art, eight trigrams sixteen plams, the training dummy collapsed under the strain of the last devastating blow, and a terrible cracking sound was heard. By means of a unique action, a novel technique has been developed. Jukenho, Hake Jiroku show, tender fist painting, 16 plams and 8 trigrams. The first move in the 8 trigrams branch of jutsu, this technique seals an opponent's chakra network by striking at blinding speeds. It is more efficient to use an 8 trigrams technique to seal an opponent's chakra than to do it by hand. This method might develop further. Price. 40 CP. For 5 minutes, seal the chakra of a foe. The effect of this jutsu must be purified for 60 CP, double the cost if the opponent's wisdom is less than 25. There is a 5% chance that the opponent will suffer a 10% health injury as a result of the chakra being purged. With great excitement, Hanabi encircled the demolished training post and exclaimed, What, how did you do that? I guess it takes a lot of training, Hanada remarked, uneasy under her sister's close observation. When the exam is over why don't I help you, that last step is pretty tricky, she said. You mean it, Hanabi inquired. Pinky promise, Hanada said, pointing to her sister with her little finger. Hanabi complained, I'm not a little kid you know, while she laced her own finger. Yes, you are, and you will always be my little fireworks, Hanada responded, 
leaving before Hanabi had a chance to comprehend her words. She heard an angry cry as soon as she was through the training area door. Oni-chan, the reputation of Hayuga Hanabi rose by a factor of 100. If one listened closely enough, they could hear the rhythmic sounds of breathing coming from the bed in the room's corner. Two figures were woven deeply into the blankets and were curled up like a mother's hug. The young man had a trail of drool that was slowly coming out of his mouth and a shaggy white patch of fur that was rising and falling on his chest. If Hannah hadn't known that her brother was going to be late for his own exams at this rate, she might have thought it was cute. She signaled to the three Hamaru brothers who were patiently seated next to her with a shake of her head. Her Ninkan obeyed her command, grabbing the duvet with their powerful jaws and yanking it free, waking the couple who had been sleeping soundly. Gah, so cold, arf, it takes them a few moments to realize what has happened, but they both gave her a rebuking glance. God, how old are you, five, needing me to get you up in the morning, what would mum think? Kiba paled slightly at the mention of his mother, he didn't want to find out what would happen if she discovered that he had overslept and was nearly late for the exams. Hannah smiled, now say it, which caused her brother to sigh. Knowing there would be no way out of this one, Kiba grudgingly said, you're the best sister in the world and I'm lucky to have you. Hannah said as she was leaving the room, damn straight, now get changed and I'll go make some breakfast. Kiba flopped back on the bed and rolled his eyes, saying, big sisters, you know it all. Shino arose early as usual and relished the sight of the Abarame compound's numerous gardens and greenhouses illuminated by the morning sun. The gardens were divided into five sections, each housing a different potency of Kikaichu, with gardens D, C, B, A, and X housing the most dangerous varieties. He would be able to enter and add specimens from the B-ranked garden to his hive if he succeeded in being promoted to Chunin. Right now he was enjoying a slow cup of tea in the D-ranked garden while the sun warmed the few remaining patches of his skin that were exposed to the weather. The garden would seem unkempt to an outsider, it was not like the gardens in the Nara compound, which have perfectly manicured lawns and trimmed bonsai trees. No, the gardens within this complex resembled a jungle. In order to gradually reintegrate into the ecosystem, trees dropped their fruits across the ground and vines grew and spread throughout the surrounding vegetation. Everything was just the way it should be, even though it might seem like no maintenance had been done. To promote the reproduction of the different kinds of insects living in the undergrowth, a natural feel worked best. Even now, somewhere in the forest, Shino's hive was returning to him with diligence. It was crucial to occasionally allow one's hive to revert to its natural state. If he didn't, a lot of his insects would lose their edge, or, more accurately, their natural instinct. A Kikaichu insect cannot be completely domesticated, at least not completely, since doing so would be harmful to their mutually beneficial symbiotic relationship. Even so, he found that coming here usually helped to diffuse his anxiety, but he could not shake the feeling of impending doom. There had been an unusual level of agitation among the insects since this morning, something he had only seen once on his first day at the... It was as if a foreign chakra was in the air, so he was cautious. That being said, it was time to leave, and he wasn't going to let his anxiety get the better of him, not right now. Hanada was excited to find out where they needed to go for the exam shortly after meeting with her sensei and her team. As it happened, the exam's first phase was scheduled to start in several places throughout the village. As it happened, Team 8 was returning to the academy to complete their exam portion. They were led to a building on the far side of the campus as they got closer to the academy. At some point, they were standing outside a door when their sensei started talking. As you prepare, Kurenai said, surveying her genin. The first phase of your exam is on the other side of this door. Kiba called her, sensei, grabbing her attention. What's the first phase going to be, can you give us any intel? She was happy that instead of barging in, her most impertinent student had thought to inquire further. It's simple really, all you need to do is go in that room and walk out of the door on the other side. Kiba asked, just walk through a door. Just walk through a door, she said in agreement. Kurenai said, what's the catch? As he saw Kiba closely examining her face. Kurenai replied, that's for me to know and you to find out, with a sly smile. Now, 
if you will excuse me, I have my own room to proctor, she said, and vanished in the distinctive leaf waft that is Shunshun. After that, Team 8 was left on their own in the hallway, with the only noise coming from Kiba's grumpy groans when he bemoaned that Kurenai should have at least provided them with some background knowledge. Hanada made the gesture, um, Kiba-kun, attempting to appease her teammate. She replied, Sensei did give us something to work with, earning a puzzled glance from her teammate. Hanada is right, Shino interjected. Why? Because Sensei mentioned that she was off to proctor this stage of the exam. You're right, Hanada said. It stands to reason that we would also have someone proctoring our portion of the exam. And if our goal is to reach the door at the end of the next room, whoever our proctor is will likely be our opposition. She summarized. Through meticulous analysis of the given hints, your intelligence has increased by one. Ah I get it, so we should probably plan ahead before going into there, Kiba replied. Yes, but to do so we must first find out who is in there, said Shino. Kakashi was disinterested, he thought the exam was about to begin because he heard sounds coming from the other side of the door. But the quiet whispering stopped, and for the past 30 minutes there had only been silence. It was peculiar, had the team chosen to forfeit, he would have known, but that would have been strange even if he hadn't entered the room. Well, he thought, and he sighed, pulling out a small orange book. Even though it wasn't the special edition, he couldn't resist getting a copy. He was eager to read it once he won the bet, but he was afraid he might have gotten spoilers because it had just recently been released. He shuddered at the thought that he nearly missed Team 8's entrance as the door opened. He thought to himself, Hum, you're late, and wondered if his team felt the same way. Shino said, Correction, adjusting his glasses. We were never given a time frame in which the test must occur, therefore it must be amenable for us to make preparations. Plus 5 points, Kakashi mockingly commented, expressing his approval of their insight. He made a thumb gesture and said, well, I'm sure you already know, his gaze never taking off the book. All you need to do to pass the first phase of this exam is to walk through the door right behind me, he said. I suppose you're not going to let us just pass right, Kakashi-sensei. Kiba responded. Kakashi's single visible eye gave off what Team 8 could only describe as a sardonic smile as he cocked his head to the side. Kiba complained, well, so much for that idea. After saying, well, Feel free to come at me whenever you're ready, Kakashi returned to his book. Story quest engineered, a carnival obstructs your path. Goal. Get past Kakashi and finish the Chunin exam's first section. Bonus goal. Take advantage of Kakashi's vulnerability. Primary reward. 2000 hours. Bonus. 100 reputation with Hitaki Kakashi and 1 bonus point. Y. N. Through a mutually understood exchange of messages, Hanada, Kiba, and Shino all advanced at once in a full frontal assault. Team 8 closed in on Kakashi, charging forward in a triangle formation. Kiba formed the most physically conspicuous point of the formation, with Hanada and Shino flanking him on either side. Kakashi was able to simultaneously swiftly and languidly launch a volley of Kanai straight into Team 8's path without even hesitating. There were several wet thunks that echoed throughout the room. Kakashi looked up from his book for a moment, then at the scene in front of him. His hurled kanai all became lodged in the genin's chests as they raced in his direction. He muttered, cute, as the three figures burst into a shower of different kikaichu insects that filled the room and blocked his view. The air filled with a whirling sound, which was Kakashi's only warning of the impending attack. A whirling tunnel of death shot through the thick mass of insects and hurtled right toward him. As the chakra started to build in his hand, he remarked, impressive speed, but far too hasty. Counterclockwise rotation should do the trick. As their masked proctor was about to collide with Kiba's Suga, passing Fang, Kakashi raised his hand to grab the approaching Inazuka as it was about to strike. Kiba felt himself strike his target and tried to drill on but his rotation slowed and he suddenly felt his momentum being stopped. What? He growled in disbelief as he sensed his own body stopping. As Kiba stopped in his palm, Kakashi said, Rasengan, which translates to, spiraling sphere. He started, quickly dropping his priceless book and lash out with his other hand. 
Not a bad plan using the bugs to cover your attack but all I needed to do was counter your rotation with a more powerful counter for. He had a delicate hand that was blazing with chakra trapped in his vice-like grasp. Not cute, not cute at all, he remarked, glancing down at Hanada, who was in close proximity to him. Using the shadow of the Suga to launch their attack, clever plan. If I hadn't seen Naruto and Sasakai do something similar in Wave then they might have even scored a hit, Kakashi was thinking. Kakashi flicked his wrists, sending Hinata and Kiba hurtling through the retracted swarm of bugs and into their third comrade. Well they have already shown enough competencies for me to pass them, but what's the harm in seeing what else they can do? XXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXX
Well, if the bee struck like a hammer and stood four feet tall. Hanada felt an arm come to rest around her wrists just as she was ready to deliver her next round of blows. She could see the pleased expression on Kakashi's face as he blocked her attack while her Byakugan was in use. During their brief conversation, she observed that he filled his other arm with chakra and flexed it when the sensation came back. But a clawed hand appeared through the smoke, streaking toward Kakashi's bare side. Kiba had taken full advantage of this opening, not needing to rely on his side to attack. Kakashi prevented the blow by grabbing Kiba's forearm with his free arm. Luckily for Kiba, his arm was still healing, so the force of the blow caused Kiba's claws to penetrate Kakashi's flak jacket by about half a centimeter. A surge of chakra built up in Kakashi's throat, and Hanada watched as he released a gust of wind that scattered the last of the smoke. Well, well. To actually land a hit on me twice, I must be getting rusty, Kakashi grinned while tightening his hold on the two genin. Now the question is, how do you plan to get to the door if you can't escape my grip? Hanada wanted to freak out because their entire strategy was to surprise him. She had hoped that it would not come to that, but in reality, they really only had one more option. At that precise moment, Shino stepped forward, and Hanada saw Kakashi look confused, then worried. Shino read aloud in a monotone, and then Natsuko could bear it no longer, she felt as if her flesh was on fire as her lust overtook her. As Hanada felt her face turn scarlet, Shino continued, slowly she felt her satin gown slip down her body, the shimmering material caressing her supple form as it fell. Kakashi cried out, no, 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 and released their wrists to cover his ears. In response, Shino advanced and raised the pages that were open in front of Kakashi's face, making him instinctively close his eyes to prevent spoilers. He didn't realize his error for several seconds until he heard a door click. Turning, he noticed Team 8 waiting by the open door. Not cute, not cute at all, he complained. The story quest is over a carnival obstructs your path. Goal. Get past Kakashi and finish the Chunin exam's first section. Bonus goal. Take advantage of Kakashi's vulnerability. Primary reward. 2000 hours bonus. 100 reputation with Hitaki Kakashi and 1 bonus point. Kiba gasped from his place in the doorway and asked, is it over? Yes, it's over, you pass. I'm actually quite impressed. You demonstrated a wide array of tactics, and even had a secondary plan in case your initial attempt failed. Most genin don't think to prepare and don't consider that no time restraints were given. It looks like I might actually lose that bet, damn you Kuranai. You swindler, you didn't say your genin were even close to being this good. Anyway, as I pointed out the door, head down the hall and enter the main auditorium, Kakashi said. Team 8 bowed briefly and darted out the door. A voice echoed down the hall, oh, and by the way, you may want to deactivate your Byakugan if you mean to keep it a secret, said Kakashi. As they made their way into the main auditorium, Hanada found it difficult to contain her enraged blush. She was just relieved that Kakashi hadn't yet planned to out her when the smoke cleared, as she had entirely forgotten to turn off her eyes. She saw two Tams waiting inside the room. Team Guy was the first. As they walked into the room, Tenten waved to them. But Hanada sensed a wave of murderous intent wash over her when the other team noticed them. Hanada looked around to discover the source of the feeling and discovered that it was coming from a mouse-like boy who appeared to be a few years her senior. His features were unremarkable, aside from the sneer etched on his face, he had brown hair. Unaware of him, Hanada chose to watch him in order to learn more. Call me Ido title. Within is the darkness. 13th level HP. 175. 177 and 800 800 cp power 1025 for dexterity 15 is the agility vitality 7 45 is the intelligence level knowledge 22 charm nil situation individual synopsis ito an unidentified combatant in the chunin exam entered as a konoha candidate and harbors intense animosity toward yuhi kurinai and everyone connected to her jutsu Although Hanada was unaware of Ido's identity, she had a feeling that she would soon discover, eventually, though. I will continue the story in next part, till then we weave offline.